Welcome back to another CNC Newbie. I'm Dave. Today we're going to be doing a sign. Uh, I've heard some people call these from tree biscuits. Uh, just a slice of tree, really. Um, I've already got this uh, milled down so it's nice and flat. It's hot glued to the bench. So I don't have any kind of uh, clamps or, or drill holes going through because I want this to be nice. I'm going to be V-carving uh, some letters into it and have a nice sign for some friends of mine. Uh, but I'm doing it, going to do it a bit backwards this time. Normally I do the carving and then I do the, uh, the finishing on top. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to be using our good old Danish oil. And I'm going to be doing the staining on it first. Once the stain's done, then I'm going to tape over the top with some painter's tape. And then do the V-carve. Because I want to actually paint inside the letters uh, with some black paint and it'll really make them pop. Now, by painting uh, afterwards without using the tape, I'd have to paint really closely uh, in all the lines. It's going to be really tricky. But I figure if I do the tape over first, the V-carve will cut through the tape. And the paint is already masked for me, so it should be easy. So, bring it up and... Uh, Get onto the, the staining. As usual, this Danish oil is doing a really good job of bringing out all those, all those lines, all the natural beauty in the wood. And it's really soaking it up a lot, actually. This is quite good. Now, I think the wood it absorbs it more when it's on the edge, because the tree is basically like a whole bunch of straws going up and down. So the capillary action is just sucking it deep into the wood. Just get absorbed right in there. That's incredible. I don't know if it's evaporating enough, it's actually just getting absorbed. All right, so I've let it dry for a couple of days because uh, it absorbed quite a lot of the uh, the Danish oil. And so I wanted to let it uh, actually properly uh, dry out. I didn't want to be worrying about carving into a wood that's still so wet somehow. Uh, this is the next step. Got some green painter's tape. Cover it in tape and that way then uh, when it actually carves out the letters, they'll already be masked, ready for painting. So it's going to save me a whole bunch of time. Let's get taping. Alright, so we're all taped up now. And uh, going to get ready for the cut. Because I really only get one go at this, I really don't want to screw it up. I'm going to make sure I do a test cut in the air above it, make sure everything is centered. So I was having a bit of a problem with the test cut actually not uh, not working correctly because it was lowering itself way too much and I was getting absolutely confused. Uh, for some reason it kept homing itself to be like just a whisker above the wood and I was trying to test it about an inch above the wood. Anyway, after a lot of looking around and Guessing. Turns out restarting a universal G-code sender fixed everything. Uh, it was using the previous home that I had set for the previous cut. So that was good. Okay, now we're on to getting ready for the cut. Uh, just going to reset the home again and make sure it's actually homing now on the wood. And we'll go. Now, I'm also cutting this a lot slower than I have cut uh, previously. I believe cutting end grain is really tough. So my plunges and my movement should be a lot slower. Hopefully that gives me a cleaner result. If not, I'm just going to ruin a perfectly good bit of wood. Let's see. So return it to the middle. Let's let those down to the wood. That's basically right on the wood. Raise it up. 1.1. All right, so we're now homed and uh, ready to get cutting.
seems that my tape idea uh, didn't really work all that well. If I'm going to do it again in the future, I might need maybe better tape. But this tape is, is junk, but uh, it's just peeling it up rather than cutting through it. So it seems to be cutting the wood okay, but the tape, <laughs> just having a bad day. Alright, and here we are. The machine has finished. Uh, this tape came off halfway. I'll just peel off the rest of this tape. Which sucks. That was a, I think it was a pretty solid idea, but it just, it just didn't turn out for us. So, so, right, I really do like these. They're really, really quick cuts. Uh, quickly vacuum it out. So it has absolutely chewed out these letters. That looks horrible. Hmm. I want to see what I can do about uh, turning up these letters before I take it off, but I was pretty happy with how centered that turned out. Basically, it's right in the center of the piece. But uh, I have to work something out for these letters. It's interesting to see with all the absorbing of the uh, stain. You really can't see any in the cut areas. I thought maybe it'd be darker. Okay, let's see what I can come up with. All right, so I am a complete goose. So I was planning on moving the machine back to center and cutting it again, thinking that would clear out all this junk. I hit the return to home button and the machine dropped down and dragged a line now completely across the edge. It then got stuck in the and symbol and did its thing where it shakes a little bit and had to stop the machine before it, it tore itself apart which means I've lost my zero point which was somewhere in the middle and it was on the tape so there's no way I can actually possibly recut that and make sure it's in the same spot again so I'm disappointed uh, I'm not beaten yet uh, what I'm going to do is basically start this process again, basically start cutting this down. I'm not going to throw this bit of wood away. I've still got plenty of thickness. I figure if I cut, a plane it down, you know, that far, that should get rid of all the letters, sand it, stain it, and have another go. Oh, really unhappy with myself. So I'm just doing the finishing of my uh, leveling pass. And this has removed about uh, about five or six millimeters of uh, of the wood, and that's what I needed to get rid of all the letters. So, yeah, hopefully I don't screw it up this time. I'm running out of wood. All right, so we're playing this down, and uh, we're ready to do the cut. What I'm doing differently this time is I like the way the light wood is looking rather than when it's stained. Actually, I think having the uh, black letters because I'm going to paint it black will stand out a bit better on the uh, on the lighter wood. So. I'm not going to uh, to stain it. We'll see how it turns out. And uh, so over on the computer, I'm actually going to make sure we get this thing running. There's some weirdness happening over here with this machine now. There's a C clip that's come loose on the top. Now I'm running this quicker than last time. So I believe a quicker cut, okay, quicker spindle speed will. Uh, do better. So right now I am. I'll go a bit past. But, uh, it's pretty cranked right now. We'll, uh, hit send. this is uh, it does seem pretty soft uh, I've actually got a feeling that it won't turn out any good so it's gonna fluff up inside there but we'll see
things about v-carving is these are really short cuts in fact cutting this took just over five minutes now it looks great from a distance but when we get in close we still get this kind of ratty you know fluff don't know how that well it's showing up but uh It's just not a clean uh, inside all those cuts. Now some parts look great, but others just look manky. So this is the part I screwed up last time. I'm going to run the exact same program again, but rather than say go to zero, I'm going to assume that it already knows zero. I think that was the thing that screwed me up last time. Basically I'm going to run the tool again, run it at full knacker, uh, with the, the uh, speed rate of uh, the spindle speed and that should uh, hopefully clear out the the burrs or the fluff for if it doesn't it might make it better uh, if not you'll find out when I do how bad it goes let's try this out and so I've got the spindle running even faster now uh, I've heard that faster speeds help out so uh, still the same nice and slow gentle feed rate uh, I don't know whether the slow feed rate's causing my fluff problem. Uh, if you do know the answer, please let me know. Now, one of the things I think my machine has a problem with, I think over time as it runs, it drops down in the Z by just a whisker. That's why you were getting all the, uh, the wood chips coming out of it, because actually it's cutting down. Uh, I need to try to work out why it doesn't hold a Z perfectly. It's pretty close. Close enough that it hasn't caused me a problem before, but uh, it's very interesting to see. And there we have it. Let's uh, let's turn this off and get the vacuum cleaner out and have a look and see how well it did. So it definitely cut out a whole bunch. Actually better? Uh, no. The edges of the letters are perfectly clean, which is nice. But uh, the inside is a bit nasty, so I have to try to clean that out with a knife before I paint it up. But uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Well, I've done my best with cleaning out the uh, the stuff in the middle, in some of the letters, but most of the letters work pretty fine. Now I'm going to go and paint it. Now if my strategy had worked with taping it off, this would be pretty simple. Uh, but instead, what I'm planning on doing is just painting it, being a bit rough, doesn't matter, and then maybe sanding it, or using the milling machine, in fact, to uh, take a layer off the top, uh, which would just be the paint, and maybe a fraction of wood. And that's why it's still uh, secured in the machine. I'm going to be using just some simple black uh, acrylic paint, and uh, I got some scrap cardboard to put it on, but uh, yeah, let's get painting. So there we have it. Uh, that's the first pass, and right now I'm going to wait till it dries, and then we're going to try sanding it off. And if that doesn't work, machine it. I tried giving a little bit of sanding, and you can see what happened. So looks like sanding's out of the picture. I'm going to uh, get a mill it. So let's hope that a, uh, this pass 
is, uh, is good enough to fix it. Right now I am going to be taking off uh, about half a millimeter off the top surface. I'm really hoping that the, uh, the black paint hasn't absorbed into the wood like uh, we saw that the oil did. Let's see. Lovely. So look at that. Now because I cut it down lower, it makes the letters a bit narrower, just because of the way V-bits are cutting into the, for the letters. So it actually makes it look really nice. It look, makes it look a bit more dainty. Uh, nice and delicate. I love it. That looks great. Now I'm going to try to get it up off the uh, off the board. And uh, we're done. So one of the way I'm holding it down is with the hot glue. And one of the ways uh, you can help with get hot glue off is actually with uh, some cold air. Uh, because hot glue gets kind of brittle in the cold. Uh, hot glue is actually kind of terrible uh, in the extremes, but great in the mid temperatures. So uh, I'm going to try to spray some under here, and uh, if all goes well, that'll help release the hot glue from it. If not, I have my spatula to help get it off. So first of all, a little bit of air to tidy it up. Because if I blast it hard, it'll make a mess. There we go. Now did the glue stick to the, yeah, the glue stick to the board and not this. Beautiful. Awesome. I'm gonna give it a quick tidy up and uh and we're done. Now, yes, it did start off about twice as thick, but uh, I think as a final piece, it uh, it came out well. I'm going to give it a quick sand and try not to sand where the letters are because I think, knowing my luck, I'll get black on the rest of the piece. But uh, that's nice. That's the start of me making signs. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I've got some exciting stuff ahead. Bye.